So thank you so much for having me here. I bring you greetings from your brothers and sisters in Zimbabwe, from my hosts, from the Loma Gundi Medical Clinic staff, and from members of the Presbyterian churches throughout Zimbabwe. I want to thank you so much for inviting me to talk with you today about my visit to the Loma Gundi Medical Clinic and the other projects of the Presbytery of Zimbabwe. First, I want to thank all of you who supported me as I experienced this dream of a lifetime. I greatly appreciate your notes of encouragement, your help with transportation, the medical supplies that you all contributed, and the monetary support. It was so fun the first day of my visit to the clinic to unpack those supplies. We took everything out of the supply closet. We washed down the shelves, wiped off all the existing supplies, and then reloaded the existing supplies, which were provided by the provincial hospital and UNICEF, intermingling your contributions. It is with great praise and thanksgiving that I am able to report that I got through customs without having to pay any tariffs. <laughs> As we had learned from a previous traveler <clears throat> who had had to pay almost $300. They didn't even open my bags. And therefore, I was able to take the funds that you had sent over and purchase, purchase additional supplies and medications that were identified by the clinic staff. So thank you all so much. God is good all the time. This was a refrain I heard often during worship services in Zimbabwe. Each service would have a time when church members were invited to come up and witness to God's presence in their lives. Frequently, they would start with this refrain, God is good all the time. And the congregation would respond, all the time, God is good. So I want us to practice that, okay? <laughs> God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Amen. The lectionary this week is very apropos to my visit. The clear theme is one of light and hope. The Isaiah verse, which Jeannie read, is familiar to us all. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The second reading comes from Psalms 27, verse 14. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Not some far off place after we die but here in our world during our lifetime. It continues, wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. Note that this is active waiting, like a bull rider waiting for the gate to open, not passive waiting. The third reading comes from Matthew 4 and references the Isaiah verse. It starts, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sit in darkness have seen a great light on those who dwell in a land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew continues telling the story of the calling of the brothers, Simon and Andrew, and the brothers James and John as the first disciples. These men left their fishing nets and went with Jesus. The story end, ends saying, he went around all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness among the people. As I have met with friends and shown them pictures of my host and other people in Zimbabwe, they have said they all have such beautiful smiles. This is true. They do have beautiful smiles and they use them a lot. I believe this is, be is because as a culture, they are a positive people. Despite several years of drought, a government that does not seem to have the best interests of the people at heart. Zimbabweans are generally optimistic and can envision a better future. 
not only can they envision a better future, they are willing to be stout-hearted and to work to bring that better future to fruition. This does not mean that there is not despair. I saw homeless people on the streets of Harare. I heard about how cancer is still a death sentence due to cost or lack of available treatment. I heard great concern about regarding <clears throat> a plan to reintroduce the Zimbabwe bond notes and stop the use of the US dollar. These are real hardships and concerns, and some people are overwhelmed. But in the church, I saw many people who are willing to give their lives to trying to change things for the better. Going back to our Matthew verse, he went around all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing diseases and illnesses among the people. I want to share with you this morning how I saw members of the Zimbabwe Presbytery living as disciples in all of these ways. First, teaching. The Zimbabwe Presbytery is very actively involved in education. <clears throat> I visited several churches which run preschool programs, several primary schools, and two boarding secondary schools. The Presbytery understands that one of the keys to changing the future trajectory of the country and people's lives is through education and skills training. One of the Presbytery of Denver partnerships that we have with our brothers and sisters in Zimbabwe is by sponsoring boreholes. A borehole is a deep well. When we, when, we, when we say well, this is what we think of, a deep, good well. When they think of a well, they think of basically a pit in the ground that you put a bucket into. So you will always hear them call these boreholes, and there's a, a very big distinction. So this is a borehole that the Denver Presbytery has installed at one of the churches. Um, you, um, off on the side, you'll see that there's a solar panel there are typically two taps <clears throat> and then two storage tanks. These wells are typically between seven and 800 feet deep and this clean water is a necessity in order to operate schools. Our ability to provide the money for this infrastructure enables them to do God's work of bringing up the next generation. Second is proclaiming the gospel. This seems like an obvious one. This is, after all, what churches do. However, I am here today to tell you that they do it better and they do it more creatively than we do. I want to tell you a story about one of the churches I visited and it's the one where this well is located. I was hosted at the church manse by Tokmore and Rumbi Chalanga. When I arrived, Rumi asked me if I had any earplugs. And I said, no, do I need them? And she said, oh yes. And she went and got me some. I asked why, and she said, you'll see. <laughs> well, later on, around dusk, there was all of a sudden this ongoing preaching over loudspeakers. There seemed to be two different groups trying to out yell each other and sometimes kind of yelling back and forth to each other. Um, Talkmore and Roomby explained to me that these were competing self-proclaimed evangelists that came to town and are preaching a sort of prosperity gospel. Give us your money and God will bless you. And telling people that their problems are the results of witches who typically were other family members. It reminded me of a cult that tries to isolate people from their family and from their community support and then prey on them taking what little they have. 
Rumbi said that usually after the people have been swindled, they will wise up to the fact that their life is not better. They stop going to the services and the evangelists move on. I asked if they were trying to do anything to combat this. Talk more and Rumbi said that <clears throat> obviously they had tried to warn people, but that once people get involved, they typically aren't willing to listen and have to learn the hard way. The church continues to witness through their good works in the community. They share the water from their borehole that I just showed you. And this, what you see, is a cue. Early in the morning, they come out and they line up their buckets and their barrels. Each family is allowed to fill up two containers per day. So they line up their buckets and barrels in a queue outside the church gate each morning. It is a vis visible witness to the willingness of this congregation to give freely a vital resource. So here's a picture of the ladies later on filling up their barrels. So in their church they have one tap that is outside the church gate for the community and then they have one tap that is inside uh, the church property for, for the use of the congregation and church. Last, they leave the lights on in the church all night and the doors unlocked. I had thought that the lights were a security precaution, but Talkmore said, no, I leave the lights on so that if after leaving the evangelist service, someone finally realizes it isn't working, that they might turn to the church and come in and pray. He said there is great despair with many in the community and this is a reminder that God is always present. The third activity mentioned in our Matthew verse is healing. <clears throat> this is where our church has been most involved in partnership. And what started my desire to go visit our brothers and sisters in Zimbabwe. So this is a picture of four of the six clinic staff. You have already learned some about our partnership with the Loma Gundi Medical Clinic. They are committed not only to providing medical services, but to doing it in a compassionate manner that maintains the individual's dignity. I talked with one family that had come for services and the husband told me that they come to the clinic even though there is another one that is closer to their home because the nurses at Loma Gindi will arrange for them to come as a family to discuss multiple issues and that the nurses really listen to what they have to say and allow them to more thoroughly describe what's going on. I was also impressed with the desire of the church and the clinic staff to become self-sufficient. They acknowledge that right now, if our partnership gifts were to stop, they would have to close the clinic. This is a concern, and they want to be more independent. However, if they are successful, they hope that we will continue to partner to support other medical needs that the Presbytery has identified. I was able to visit two other clinics that are associated with the schools and one clinic that is currently closed because the facility is too antiquated to operate. The Loma Gundi Clinic is working on a proposal for adding maternity services. And you heard her speak about the fact that they do the pre-birth and then they do the post-birth services but they can't actually deliver babies. This would allow them, this would, this would require enlarging and upgrading the current facility. They believe that, that it would not only provide a valuable service to the community, but it would also allow them to increase their revenue to a level that would move them towards self-sufficiency and allow us to move our funds to another project. In these three areas of discipleship, education, proclamation and healing, the Presbytery of Zimbabwe is doing great works and we are privileged to be able to stand in partnership with them. 
So I would like to close by providing some ideas on how we could enrich our partnership. First, and perhaps most obvious, is to keep these brothers and sisters in your prayers. You will sometimes see in the vista a reference to one of the Zimbabwe congregations. When you do, take a moment and envision one of these faces that you have seen today and pray for that congregation. This was a small outpost congregation and you can see it's a shack. You can even see through the walls to the, to the light outside. Um, and this was a group of women, their women's fellowship that was meeting and I had a chance to go and worship and, and talk to them. Second is make a friend. Over the years, many of you have had an opportunity to meet some of our Zimbabwe brothers and sisters when they have come to Denver through our delegation and long leave sabbatical programs. I have found a great way to stay in touch with these folks and to continue that friendship. It is a cell phone application called WhatsApp. And most of my Zimbabwe friends have it. It allows you to send a text, send a photograph, and even talk to the other person. And they, it's, it's, it runs over Wi-Fi, and um, the, the families I stayed with, although the lower class families obviously wouldn't have it, but the middle class families I stayed with almost all had Wi-Fi, and so this was a tool that they use. <laughs> I received and sent several Christmas wish wishes to friends in Zimbabwe, and I have received pictures of the rain, which has been a great blessing that they are now receiving. They were at the end of a very long drought when I was there, and the last week I was there, the rains finally started to come, and they were so excited. So I've received pictures of the rain, and I've sent them pictures of the snow in Pagosa Springs, which has created quite, quite a lot of, 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 of talk back and forth about what do you do when this happens. One funny thing that I would like to share is that at Christmas, I received from two separate people in Zimbabwe a Christmas wish, which had a video, a little video, showing Santa Claus dancing next to a Christmas tree and singing Feliz Navidad. <laughs> it made me laugh that my Shona-speaking friends were sending their English-speaking sister a Christmas greeting in Spanish. <laughs> it is truly a global world. And third, of course, is our financial support. Over and over I've heard from these strong Christians that they are not looking for a handout. They do not want to be dependent on us. Over and over, they stress that whatever partnerships we join into with them, they need to have the goal of being self-sustaining. As a congregation, we have chosen the area of medical care as the way that we will join in partnership. If you would like to know more about the proposal for the clinic expansion and how it would not only increase medical services, but also move the clinic towards self-sustainability in the future, I would love to talk with you further after the service. Out in the narthex, I have a short slideshow of my visit, including pictures of my many hosts, the church programs and facilities that I visited, and some of my sightseeing pictures from Victoria Falls. Brothers and sisters, let us continue to stand in partnership in our community and with Christians around the world, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every deed, every disease and illness among the people. Remember, God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Amen. <laughs>